Welcome to Captain's Dry Dock and in the episode today... I'm in a church! So I should explain, hold on a minute. Oh, can you hear me now? So I should explain myself. Why on earth am I in a church when this is all about putting on the Stormtrooper outfit that I've been building over the last several months? Well, quite frankly, look how much of it there is to put on. In fact, this is the first time I've laid it all out and I actually had to contact many people in my local town to find a space big enough to be able to lay it out, to put it on so I can film it, so you guys can actually know how this all comes on in the first place. So the first thing I need to do is get down to my underwear. Ta-da! Yep, yeah, even down to Star Wars boxer shorts. If you're gonna do something, you might as well go balls deep. The first thing I need to put on is the undergarment. Now, this is a one piece. You can actually get them in two pieces, maybe three pieces, the trousers, the top, and the so-called shiny shorts. But these ones were specifically made to be a one piece. Now, it's super, super stretchy, and it's made for, well, this particular one is made for my height, which is five foot seven. I do not know the metric to that, but you can work that out for yourselves. Alexa, what's five foot seven in metric? 1.702 meters. And as you can see, this is the reason why us men want to be stormtroopers. It's the lycra underneath the arm. So oh, I need to put that back all on. Nice little wedgie up there. And uh, yeah, there we go. Very tight, very snug. And there we go. And you're probably wondering about the shiny bits. That is actually canon to the film. That's right. Stormtroopers, the first order stormtroopers anyway. They got shiny butts. So that's all nice and tight and it's meant to be like that because you're gonna wear armor on uh, above it. And just stiff it all up. And it does help to make sure you go to the gym because this is not flattering. Oh yeah, by the way, with this particular one, they also include a bottom zip. That's right, fellas. So if you need to go for a wee wee, you can actually zip this up and then pull out your little fella. Anyway, there we go. So I won't go into too much detail about that, but that is the undergarment which you need to have underneath the first order Stormtrooper armor. Yes, you guessed right. I need to put on a strap on. Well, this is a harness which is bespoke made for my measurements by Kiki Pinks. Again, link is down below, and that goes for everything I actually wear in this video. So you know where I've got all these parts. Now, as I'm putting it on, it's actually really hard to work out which way is which in regards to if it's inside or out. But you need to have the buckles out here, and they just clip in like here, clip, and top one there, clip, and there's a bottom one here. There we go, and tighten all this up. Now, why do you need a harness like this? Well, quite frankly, it hangs on to parts of the armour to your body, such as the thighs and also the shoulder pieces as well, either side, but I'll show you that in a minute. Now, it's Thunderfies. Yep, here we go, I'm gonna put these on next. Now, by the way, this is my first fitting, so I'm not too sure which is the best one to put this all on. I'm only judging by from when I actually put on my New Hope armor, where you start from the bottom as, and you work your way up, because you can't bend over as a Stormtrooper, because this armor won't allow you. So first things first, I'm gonna put on the thigh pieces as the armor. So, this is where you get to see how this harness system works. Now, you've got a buckle in here. Now, if you haven't already done so, if you just go to my playlist, you will see how I made all this stuff come together. And so there's a video for each part. So if you wanna know how to actually put the thigh part together, you can actually go to that video now. So there's a clip there, big old buckles, and here I can adjust it, but I won't adjust it now, I'll adjust it later. So it's not too tight, and then slip this one on. Now you can tell which one's which because this one 
has that specialist holder. And again, there's a video to this as well. And again, there's a great big buckle here. Now, once I've got the fine parts of the armor on me, I can actually start tightening up the straps here. It makes it so much easier. So there we go. And then tuck it underneath the harness here. There we go, you can see how big and bulky these guys are, but it's incredibly comfortable. Now if you look at that, there we go, so it's not cutting to me too much here, and boy does it look like I'm putting on a little bit of weight, but that's okay. So there you have it, that's how you put on the thighs. Now for the calf parts of the armour, as well as the knees, and what you see here is that I've kind of prepped it, because you've got these gaskets. Now, not all gasket, uh, gasket makers are the same, so these are from Geeky Pings, these are set foot, so when I say set foot, they actually are individual in regards to each joint. Some gaskets go the whole length of the limbs, the entire arm, but these attach in, at the ends of the parts of the legs, so this will attach to the calf, and the top bit will attach where the thigh arm is with Velcro but again if you look at my playlist you will see me make these and describe in great detail how I went about it. Now first thing I need to do uh, is slip it on like a sock. Now I've only done this once before and I'm super super careful and cautious because you spend so long painting, filling, making these you don't want to crack it and believe me it may happen during this whole procedure but that's the whole point of first fitting, is to basically get out all the bugs. Because the last thing you want to do is go to a Comic Con, put all this stuff on, after you've lugged it across the entire city, and the thing snaps on you when you're putting it on. And then the kids are spoiled by the illusion that you're no longer a stormtrooper. You're made out of plastic and lycra. Now that I've got the left part of the leg done, now do exactly the same with the right part. And there we have it. After a lot of fidgeting and readjusting, again, this is the first fitting, I've got them on. They're a little bit twisted, but that can actually be remedied later on because it's just Velcro holding it all together. Now, I'm actually quite pleased with this. It feels quite, it's not too bad. You feel like you've got a lot of movement. Compared to the New Hope armor, and if any of you Stormtroopers do have the armor, you would know that it really cuts into you. But this, there's a lot more comfort in these legs than there are in the New Hope Stormtrooper armor. Spats. No, I didn't spit, I'm talking about these babies. So these, basically it's a, it reminisces back in the olden days where soldiers used to have these around their ankles to keep the dirt and the wetness out from their boots. And it's a carry on from that which they've included in the Stormtrooper design. And they go around my ankles. So the spats are quite simple. So you want the clips on the outside. And again, there's good old Velcro here where other builders actually use some snaps to put this on. Also, it's really good to know that I've added Velcro to the, top, uh, to the bottom of the rim here on the calf armour to hold this in place. Otherwise, it will start to rotate as you walk around. And the last thing you want to do is a bit like a kid running around with a loose sock. You don't want to keep on having to adjust it as you're walking around. So there's a corresponding piece of Velcro on the inside of this spat and that's how I'm going to line it up. So it's quite simple. There we go. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your arm, and that is on. So there's one spat. So there we go. I highly recommend add Velcro to the inside of your spats to attach to the calf part of your armour so it rotates with the whole leg. And while I'm down here, shoes. Or should I say boots? So these ones are specifically made for the First Order Trooper. Yes, I just spotted the mistake as well. I used the wrong boots. In my haste to get everything together to go and film this episode, I picked up my New Hope Stormtrooper armour boots, not the ones for the First Order, and there's a difference. So the New Hope armour boots, they're basically white Chelsea boots, which have a heel and a point to the toe part of it. Whereas the First Order boots are very much bespoke. They're completely fat, flat on the sole and they're rounded where the toes are. Not a massive difference and in fact I've been told since when I showed stills on some forums that back in the day the 501st kind of allowed this and would you know, and you can get clearance for those type of old boots but now that there's so many more manufacturers out there for first order equipment they don't allow it so it means when I take some pictures so I can get clearance for the 501st I have to make sure I pick up the correct first order boots. 
As you can see, it's got a nice rubber sole to it, uh, upper leathers. In fact, this is a good quality shoe. And a pity I'm not in fashion. And again, we know how to put shoes on, yet they just slip on like so. Well, this is actually the most difficult part because I'm wearing all the leg armor, which means it's very, very difficult to put on. Now that was mission, I'm actually sweating, my heart's going. And you know what? You need to do some yoga when you put on this armor because I'm pulling muscles in my back. Yeah, I've got all the bottom of her part done now. And I have to say already, I'm finding little adjustments I'm gonna make later on. But that's the point about the first fitting. It's never going to be perfect. In fact, members of the 501st are watching me now going, oh, he's not done that right. There's an inch out here, an inch out there. I understand that, but this is the first fitting and will be adjustments later. But so far, comfortability, it's really fine, but it is in incredibly hard to put on. So take your time, even though I just sped up the video early on. The torso. Now I've done a test fitting of this in my videos before, but that was me stepping into it. But as you see, I've got all the leg armor on and there's no way that is gonna let me fit through the top of this, which means I have to try and work out how to get in it while I've got this leg armor on. So I reckon just loosen the back fasteners here and then slip it over my head. Now, again, this is where you need someone to actually help you. And uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna use a guy called Andy. Andy the cameraman, which I'll introduce you to you later, who's gonna strap me in. Wow, now again, if you do yoga, <laughs> this will really help you out. So I managed to slip myself in here, going from the bottom with the help of having those fasteners undone. And then I can just clip these on. And just like the thigh armor, you can adjust these. So I would say, just make them nice and loose here, like so. Now that they're nice and loose, I can start moving it around and actually it's quite comfortable. Now what I need to do now is fasten up the back, but I can't do that on my own. So now I'm just gonna have to employ the services of my cameraman. Come on, Andy. Now that the back is done, I just need to tighten these fasteners. So that goes a little bit high like that. So raise it up a bit. Now again, I can adjust this a little bit more later on once I start adding all the other parts but that is feeling nice and secure. So the benefits of actually having someone to help you out is, as you can see, that would have been a real pain in the ass, or should I say pain in the back, to be able to fasten that up. And also, he made it nice and tight, which means it's nice and comfortable. <laughs> Next is my crotch and butt. Ah. I can't bend over. But well, thankfully, again, my handy cameraman Andy has handed them to me. So there's a little tip for you. If you are doing it on your own, what you should do is actually have a table with all this laid out so you don't have to bend over. Or even on seats, something that's raised up to your waist level so you can just grab it off the side and just put it on yourself. If you don't have any friends like me, I had to hire this guy with a couple of beers. Let's work on my butt. Trust me, my actual butt doesn't sound like that. So I'm gonna do this myself. So it should be quite simple because there's snaps and there's snaps on the webbing as well. So if I just turn around and then locate the snaps, if you can hear me, to the butt plate. And then I wanna hear the satisfying snap. There's one. Now to work on my crotch. Same sort of method, couple of snaps on a piece of webbing, which should be hanging down here somewhere. There we go. So we wanna hear a satisfying snap. That's one. And then there's two. There we are. There we go. Flappy little crotch there. So at this point, this is where I can address the height of this, this torso part of the armor. So the crotch isn't rubbing against your thighs. There we are. Now, it's a bit flappy here, so this is where I need a bungee cord to connect my butt to my crotch. 
Now, I know this video is safe for children, but I'm doing something which looks a bit weird. I'm attaching a bungee cord, which makes sure the flappy crotch and the flappy butt stay in place. So if you just pan down, cameraman, I'm sorry about this, but as you can see, there is a bungee cord and there's a hook inside where the butt is and that attaches to the hook inside where the crotch is, like so. And there we go. No flappy crotch or flappy butt. If I look knackered, it's because there's a whole section of putting this belt on that I didn't film. In fact, it was super hard to get on. I had to get cameraman Andy to come around and actually really stretch it in and make sure it all locks together because there's so much going on because it meets in between the crotch, the butt, the torso, and it's got to snap together with these bags as well. But I have to say, it does feel really secure. Now you could argue and say you could have made it looser, but the problem with it being looser is that it's not meant to act like a proper bell. It's meant to be the exact circumference around the actual armor itself. It's just aesthetic. It's not meant to hold up your trousers. So that's one of the reasons why if I made it too loose, it would actually start falling down. Or I need to attach snaps or even Velcro just to make sure it doesn't go slanted. If you didn't know better and you actually went and clicked onto this video and didn't realise it was a Stormtrooper fitting, you'd think I'd be doing something a little bit s and &M. I don't know what it is about Stormtroopers, but underneath their armour, they like shiny leather, or shall I say, pleather. Now this, I don't think it's Geeky Pinks, it may be, but this is very similar to most other manufacturers that produce the neck seal, which goes above your head. So it's a bit like the whole dicky neck, which Howard, Howard Wolowitz wore in the Big Bang Theory. So it's like that type of thing. Now there is a zip on the back, so that goes right there, and that may be quite difficult for you to do, but what I'll do is actually have it at the front first, then zip it up, and then turn it around, which makes it a whole lot easier. And yes, I do have the cameraman Andy to help me, but as much as I can, I wanna show you how you can put things on yourself. And there we go. So nice, sexy neck seal. Can you tell what these are? Yep, these are the guns, the biceps. Now, I've already pre-actually built these in regards to the gaskets they're installed. So you've got the two elbow gaskets and you've got the two shoulder gaskets. Now, I'm gonna try and put these on by myself, but I may need some help later. First things first, I'm gonna put on the left shoulder. Now, how it works and how they attach is two systems here. You've got Velcro, which, which corresponds to the Velcro onto the harness, which I, was the first thing I put on at the start of this video. And then you've got the buckle, which attaches at the back. And this is what I mean where you might need help. You can actually attach this beforehand and put it on almost like a, a t-shirt or jumper with no font to it. But I'm gonna do it this way because, again, this is the first fitting. And one thing I've realized is that this harness is in the way. So I'm gonna move this out of the way because this needs to attach to the Velcro here. See, this is where you need to have a full length mirror as well. So if you are doing it by yourself, have a mirror so you can actually tuck in things and make sure things are aligned and working well for you. Now, just by judging by the feel, I think this is actually okay, but later on I'll get my cameraman to help me out. And then once that's all installed and feels comfortable, there we go, lots of movement there, it's really good. I'm gonna cross the web back over and then attach it. There we go, and then tighten it up. And same again to the right arm. As you can see, things are getting a little bit more restricted now. And with the light, you can probably see the glistening sweat on my head because it is starting to get a little bit hot. But there we go. Check out my guns. Join the dark side. We are almost there. So it's all the big stuff, so the torso part. Now this is the really recognizable stuff other than the bucket. Bucket is basically a lot of troopers use that term for the helmet. I prefer helmet, but hey ho. So this is the torso part. So this is the back bit, which goes over your shoulders, but it needs to actually have the shoulder belt. So it's the shoulder parts of the armor and they attach directly onto this using snaps and webbing. So before putting this on, I get my shoulder belt and I should have done this at the very beginning of this video. And then you just snap them onto the torso. 
Yeah, so I had to speed up that video like most parts of this whole thing uh, because it was a bit fiddly. So I've learned something here. In fact, attach the shoulder bells at the very beginning before you start putting on the armor. But there you go, that is looking the part already without even a mannequin. Now the difficult part for this particular kit is slipping it over my head and making sure I don't crack these delicate parts that go over the shoulders. So what I need to do is do similar, but be careful of not snapping those shoulder braces. Right, that was a bit fiddly. In fact, I don't know if you heard it, but I did hear a crack or a snap. And now it's going to be expected while putting on this armor for the very first time because it's the first time things have bent and moved in ways that they've never done so before. So no doubt after this, I'll need to examine all the armor and see where the weak points are, reinforce them from behind with either strips of aluminium or plastic and then repaint. But rather do it now than just before going out on a cosplay at a Comic Con. Ah, I totally forgot to film this because I forgot to put the thermal detonator on. So what I should have done is put the thermal detonator on before I put this top part of the torso onto my shoulders. However, again, thank you cameraman Andy, he fitted it on for me. He was on his hands and knees practically trying to slip it all the way underneath the top part of the armor. Stormtroopers love their lycra from head to toe, literally head to toe. So I need to put this over my head. Now you don't actually have to do this. This is a balaclava, but it's really good when you're wearing a helmet all day and you're sweating and it basically, I know it sounds gross, but it catches all that moisture and makes it a whole lot comfortable. Also, when you're going around at these events, you're gonna have kids looking up at you. And one thing is terrible when it just ruins the whole effect is when they see your skin underneath and they can see that there's a person inside of course there's a person inside but the illusion of being a stormtrooper is the anonymity of it you're anonymous and so it's really good to actually wear one of these now i've seen these being sold for stupid amounts of money on etsy in fact it's just a black balaclava and not made out of wool just a lycra and i got this one for about 2 2.99 off the ebay and it does the job and there we have it. I look like a really weird ninja. The little black box. Well, this is an amplifier. In fact, you would have seen these by historical walkers around your local city, shouting out all the history of your local village or town or city, wherever you are. Now, I've seen these being sold for stupid amounts of money on specialist stormtrooper shops, but all it is is just a voice amplifier. I've got a link down below where you can get this. Now, there are options of where to put this on your persons. Now, I've seen troopers who actually take the casing off and then install all the electronics into their helmet, which is a really good idea. I've actually done it on my New Hope helmet, which means you can just put it on, take it off, and it's really, really easy. However, at the moment, I'm actually gonna put it on my person's hair, somewhere around on my chest, like there, and then wear it like so. Now, how it works is this. Now, I'm gonna switch it on. And this is what a Stormtrooper sounds like. And you can imagine it helps for the whole effect. And um, you can turn it up to the loudest here, all the way back down. The great thing about being a first order stormtrooper is does, it doesn't have all those clicks and whistles because when you look at movies, the first order troopers don't have that compared to the New Hope troopers where as they talk, there's a click and buzz and there's interference and that costs a lot of money to actually include that and there's plenty of aftermarket kits out there. However, the first order troopers, they don't have that. They just have an amplified voice like this. I'll tighten those restraints. Scavengers scum. That particular trooper was, that's right, Daniel Craig, James Bond, and you can actually recognise his voice now that I explained it. Big up your chest! Well, if you're from London, you know what that phrase means, especially if you're from South London, but this for me is my most favourite part and one of the first parts of the armour I started to actually paint and finish. I think it's so iconic for the First Order Troopers. It looks like an iPhone. Essentially, the whole First Order Trooper armour is on an iPhone when you compare it to the New Hope. And all that I need to do with this is actually use some Velcro. Now, I've seen troopers out there that use magnets. In fact, that's a really good idea, and I think 
after this, I may actually use magnets because I use a lot of Velcro on this build. And the only thing about that is, is that you're having to just use your feel to work out if something's attached. Whereas if it was magnets, it will snap into place and you know it's there. So all I need to do is just, there we go. So I've got Velcro parts here and here and Velcro on the side. Now again, a meal would be good at this stage. And as I said, I'm having to feel the Velcro, whereas if this was magnets, I could feel them snapping where I can't see. So at the moment, again, this is just a first fitting, so I'm not too worried about alignment, just the fact that it's attached. So Andy, cameraman, how does that look? Brilliant. So I'm feeling the force with Andy, and he says it's good, and boy, out on camera shot, I have been bitching all the way through this entire thing. Transparency is a thing, Captain's Dry Dock. It has been an absolute ball lake, pardon my French, of putting this on. It's actually been quite a struggle because you can't see how it looks as well. You're not getting the satisfaction. However, now that I've got, shall we say, nine tenths of it on, I mean, the chest plate's on, it's feeling good. Don't get me wrong, it's hot, it's uncomfortable, but emotionally, I'm feeling the part, you can feel strong, it's, it's really firm, it feels like armour, even though it's plastic and it can't protect you from pebbles, it's, uh, it's, not, it's brilliant. So already I'm feeling good about this armour. So just to let you know that if you are going to get armour like this, there is a sacrifice, being comfortable and being cool, because you can't be anyone those two if you're wearing this armour. However, you will feel great. If you have actually been watching the playlist of this Stormtrooper build, you would have known about these forearms and the fact that I ballsed up the first lot. Yes, that's right, I cut it incorrectly and because I thought parts of it was flashing. In fact, since then, I've seen another maker on one of the Facebook Stormtrooper sites who did exactly the same mistake. Pity he didn't see any of my videos. However, this is the second lot which I learned from that mistake and they came out really, really well. So, other than the helmet, in fact, this, as well as the gloves, are perhaps the most easiest things to put on. You just slip it on like a glove. There we go, on it goes. There we go, there we are. Now what you need to do is make sure it gets tucked in into the gasket. I can almost hear you frantically type in the comments saying, that's the wrong way round. Yes, that's right. It's only until I actually started editing it that I spotted it myself. I got the forearm parts of the armor, the wrong way round. So essentially the left one is on the right arm and the right arm's on the left one. And that's all it was. So what I need to do when I actually go back to my armor, I need to write a really clear label on the inside saying left and right. It's just the case I just slipped them on. I was in a bit of a rush and it's incorrect. No big deal, but really stands out for ones who know what first order trooper armor should look like. And I originally I did actually have Velcro in here to make sure it wasn't gonna move. But to be fair, the aperture, or where the wrist is, is so small, it's not gonna come off, especially when you've got the glove on as well. And in fact, this is very accurate to the ones they actually wore in the films. One third of this, as you can see here, is not glued down to give some space for the hand to actually be fed through. So it's so small, your hand actually keeps the forearms in place. So what I did when I was building this, I took the Velcro out so there was no need for it, because it was a real, ball leg to actually uh, attach that velcro in there and when you didn't have it correctly it was really hard to rotate and also when you want to have brakes you can just slip these on and off like gloves now that is feeling really good look at that there we go now there is a lot of maneuverability here i wouldn't say it's the same maneuverability as my new hope armor in fact i think i might have trouble putting on my helmet later on because I, I think it really depends on your size. Now I'm five foot seven, so everything's proportionate. Not everything, ladies. And so if you have longer arms, I reckon that you would have a lot more bend in regards to this armor. But I've got shorter arms, and therefore when I try and bend my arms, yeah, it's, 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 there's not a lot of arm where the joint is. And so that's something to bear in mind. So every time you put on an armor, it's not gonna be exactly the same experience as someone else if they are a different body size. Is it getting cold in here? No, it's bloody not, I'm really boiling. But I've gotta put these gloves on. Yeah, being a stormtrooper in summer, so everyone who goes to a Comic Con in San Diego, 
I now can sympathise how hot it must be. Especially if you listen to Adam Savage on Tested, he always talks about how hot and how much you have to sacrifice yourself and your comfort levels to the heat of your environment. And yeah, on top of all this armour, you have to put gloves on to get the full effect. Now, to get a little bit more detail about this, this, these gloves, there's something really cool about these. You see these armour bits, and if you haven't seen the video, I'll go into detail now. These are actually moulded from the cast from the film version of the armour. So basically, it's a copy, a direct copy. So this is what it's like. It's not actually part of the Imperial Surplus Kit, which again, is absolutely fine. But the definition, the, the look of it is exactly that from the films. We are almost there. Yes, I know, I just need to put the helmet on, but you're not going to hear me when I talk about Yes, the weapons. Now, there's a couple of weapons you can choose from with the first of the Stormtroopers, specifically with this outfit, and this one is the Blaster. Yeah, this is very recognisable, and this one is actually a 3D print from, I think it's the Free Horseman. Again, link down below. It's a free file that you can download, and all this is printed on my resin and filament printer. However, what else did I include on this? Listen to this. This E11D blaster rifle is now operational. Rapid fire selected. Stun setting selected. Prepare for the arrival of the Supreme Commander. So you get my point. In fact, most of that was not canon to the film. However, when you switch it off, no one's gonna know none the wiser. That was just something for me. And by the way, that voice is my fiance, which I'm gonna get married to in a couple of months. And she lent that voice to this. Now, yes, I know it's not canon, but you know what? It allows for some creativity because sometimes you wanna splash out and be able to put your touches to your armor or glasses, which I did with this. Now, this actually can attach to the leg part of my armour, like so. There we go. Now I do need to make adjustments to this because I made the blaster before I made the armour and so I need to revisit this and make sure the bolts are closer together so it's not going to fall off. But for the time being, as an example, you can see how cool this actually looks. I really recommend getting this aftermarket um, holster which a, a guy called Dan still makes and by all means I will put the details down below and you can see if you can get one from him. Highly recommended. Say hello to my little friends. Oh, traitor! Yeah, for those who recognize it, this is the baton. This was made by Hasbro. I don't think they make it anymore. I had to actually have this imported all the way from the States, but boy, does it add to the effect. Now, the reason I got this was because if I do want to go trooping in public, we all know it's against the law, well, especially in the UK, to walk around with an imitation firearm. Yes, the blaster is white and black, it doesn't look like a real firearm, but no one else will actually probably know that, especially members of the public who've never seen Star Wars. I know, that can actually happen. And there have been instances where the police will apprehend troopers, cosplayers, and basically will actually take their blasters away if not actually arrest them. So be warned. So this is why I got myself the baton. So if I do anything out in the public, if I'm going in tube stations on the way to a cosplay event, I can actually have a weapon, which is this. This does not look like an intimidating firearm. This is just a light and sound effect toy. So that's the reason I've got myself one of these. And also it belongs to the character, one of my favorite characters from the franchise, the Stormtrooper that did this. How cool is that? Why would you not have this baton? Hmm, what's missing? <laughs> Finally, we are here. Now, this is off the shelf. This was originally by Anabos, the premium line, the Mark II premium line, where this was made out of fiberglass as well as a really nice interior on the inside. Now, you won't be able to hear me when I have this on because, as I said before, I'm not going to wear the amplifier, otherwise, you're not going to hear me talk anyway. But just to show, show what the entire thing looks like. And what I'll do, once I put it on, I'll get Andy to actually do a 360 around me in the room so you can see me from all angles. And so, 
Are we ready? The first time I've actually ever worn a completed first order Stormtrooper armor. I'm more excited than if it was Christmas Day or my daughter's birth. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. thank you to cameraman Andy who has helped not only film all this for me but also got very intimate with me as well so thank you so much for that Andy and I actually have bought him a couple of cans of beer while he's been filming so if it's a little bit shaky you have to blame me for that and also Brewdog. Brewdog please sponsor me. Anyway so in the meantime my name's John Child this is Captain's Dry Dock or should I say a church that's Andy Ward and I'll see you on next episode. You take care, stay safe, and goodbye.